Hey guys, this will be video 38 for the how to design build a 1950s era solid body arch type jazz guitar using Stuart McDonald templates, of course, but not anymore because the guitar is finished or it's ready to be finished, I should say. And uh, this video will primarily cover uh, just that, uh, a very general conversation about moving forward and doing stain work. Now, I'm not going to discuss how to do a burst in this video. That is, is a, 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 an almost a, a complete series in its own right. And uh, there's so many guys out there that are doing that, have done that, and are so savvy in that. They're either, uh, they're either better than I am for certain, or at a minimum, they're just far more current. So if you want to do a burst, uh, knock yourself out. And some of the other guys that are building that guitar and, uh, and, just, uh, and just do that. But if you're going to uh, paint a black beauty, like the guitar that I just built for Ethan, um, uh, basically like the 55 uh, era uh, guitar, which was a, a replica Les Paul, uh, it, it was, it's loaded full of binding. And what spooks me about the binding is, uh, and I'm going somewhere with this, when I was doing Rick's guitar, which was the 80s uh, Les Paul Custom, which I had to do a considerable amount of binding, but that guitar w had, a, had a, an enormous amount of aging. And when I was blending that binding with his old bind, the new binding with the old, which was the seven ply black, white, black, and then et cetera on the top, and the five ply black, white, black, et cetera, white on the out on the back, um, I didn't have to worry too much about uh, stain leaching into that binding and destroying it. But but Ethan's guitar is, is a completely different story because it's a brand new guitar and we're trying to expedite the sealing process of just envision this as mahogany. We're trying to expedite the process of painting that mahogany black, be it the cap, the sides, and the back. And then it's surrounded by all this binding. So I say that to say this, that little bit of yellowing right there is from me putting some uh, trans tint honey amber in nitrocellulose lacquer. I want to make sure I don't misspeak, uh, not alcohol or not water, but put trans tint in nitrocellulose lacquer. And then it turns this really uh, uh, honey amber color. It looks like, actually it looks like honey. And that right there was achieved by just one dip or one white. So I say that to say this, I'm, I'm, I'm so spooked because I've never done this before. I'm so spooked by telling uh, Ethan, oh yeah, man, just mix up some stain and uh, rub that black stain in there and then uh, everything will be great. But I don't, I've never done it before. I've never done that guitar that way. So proceed with extreme caution, Ethan, <laughs> because I may be wrong. But I just want to make certain that that black does not leach into your uh, multi <clears throat> your multiply binding and run the risk of it turning gray. So uh, I apologize for not knowing the answer, but nonetheless, uh, your your binding is such that I didn't do any. I had mentioned I was going to do a lot of additional scraping. I didn't. I left it alone. So if you wanted to tape yours off and do all your work. And, and then uh, scrape it, you should be okay to just make like one one scrape pass. But don't do two or three, or don't do, certainly don't do more than that, because the, 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 the height of your binding is over a quarter of an inch. This is much, considerably over a quarter, and I'm just spooked that if you scrape off too much of your binding height, your guitar will end up looking like a copy. So, so, uh, so your guitar is a two inch thick body and let's, let's try to maintain that. Don't let it end up being one and 15 sixteenths of an inch. You'll, it, it's, it's really sad how quickly you'll lose the guitar that we built. I'm not, I'm not saying you're not qualified. I'm just saying whoever does it, if you do it or have someone do it, just please proceed with caution. I would feel much better if you just taped everything off and spent just you know, hour upon hour upon hour taking it off. 
So I say that to say this. I did make a statement. I had mentioned that, oh, yeah, just use the mix all and you mix it with a denatured alcohol rather than, uh, than water. Uh, but I was incorrect. If you do do this staining, uh, get this right here. This product is called Trans Tint. Phenomenal, phenomenal product. Just study it. It's about 30 to $35 for this small amount here, but it lasts forever. Um, you can mix this with water or you can mix it with denatured alcohol. If you mix it with water and you do your stain work like you would stain anything, uh, it's going to raise the grain uh, quite, uh, quite a bit. But if you mix it in with a denatured alcohol, it's not going to raise the grain nearly as much. And that's what we want if we can achieve it, especially if you're doing like a burst. Because you don't want to stain it and this thing turn into a, a polar bear and then you're sanding it off and then you end up uh, sanding too much and you get you start getting a, a, a cloud, like patchy cloud work, which actually kind of looks cool because it looks very vintage. But we don't want that on, on the, the Black Beauty. So you got several options. As I mentioned, you could just go on steamac.com and order... Uh, I don't think they carry the Mohawk product, but the Mohawk carries a, a, what used to be Baleen, B-E-H-L-E-N. Uh, that's what I always used and still do. Uh, this, uh, this is Clear Nitro M610, 1406. But where I'm going with this, if you have some black like this, your traditional, and this came from Hobby Lobby, uh, or if you had the Mixall, which I get from a company called Woodcraft, um, you mix that into your nitrocellulose lacquer, and then you use your spray equipment, and you have a, a spray booth with a with an explosion-proof fan. Uh, this stuff is extremely dangerous and extremely volatile. I'm not giving anybody any any uh, any recommendations as how to work with this. If you want if you want to really burn the house down, that product right there will do it. So proceed with incredible caution, um, or just go to stewmac.com and buy the black in an aerosol can and and do this baby out in your backyard. Uh, you know, and I hate to sound like a cowboy, but I'd feel better at least just saying, you know, get it out of the house because that's a dangerous product. Or uh, get with a pro and let, let them do the finish. And uh, I don't know what it would, would cost to do that, but it, it would not be cheap. But nonetheless, uh, it would, uh, you know, be, it'd be a pro job. Okay, so let me check the time. As I always say, 7 minutes, 48 seconds. Now that I kind of gave just a, a shotgun blast view of uh, what, what you could be working with, I just want to make certain that I drive home. I'm just fearful of telling you, oh yeah, just get up there and start standing with your heavily black tinted material and then uh, and, and that I'll be for certain that it's not going to risk leaking, leaching in to your the twenty thousandths micro thousandths of uh, uh, white black white black white black and then the big one on the outside you can scrape the big one on the outside no problem but you, but if you start coming up here and, and scraping this top you might start lose we might start losing our thickness okay so uh, but if you are going to do it uh, trans tint black or it may be ebony uh, I, I've never I don't have any because I've never had to do it. Uh, but that would be the product you would use. And you could either mix it with a denatured alcohol to keep the grain down, or you mix it with a uh, yeah, or you can mix it with a water and uh, and it'll turn it into a little little uh, polar bear. So let's see what this stuff does. Let me get some gloves on. I'm gonna show you how potent it is. Uh, for $30, it ought it ought to pretty much apply itself, but it doesn't. And uh, it's funny, I just looked over here and I noticed something. Uh, I have a confession to make. I mailed everything back to you, and this is for you, Ethan. I mailed everything back that I could think of, and I could have sworn I had everything in the box, but this was laying over on my uh, oscillating sander table. So this is for the Bigsby layout, the string. If you need this, let me know. I'll mail it to you. If not, if you want to contribute to the, the channel here, I'll use it for laying out future Bigsby's. But uh, just let me know if you need that, and I'll, I'll get it in the mail to you. All right, so let's say you're going to do some honey amber, and this is this is water. And when I say wear safety glasses, 
and gloves, wear safety glasses and gloves, gloves especially, um, this stuff is unbelievably potent. I mean, it's just, if you get it on you, and speaking of getting it on me, uh, see, I've already touched it. Now I'm scared to touch my uh, touch my guitar there. Should be fine. I'm just going to make sure I don't uh, get crazy with it. All right, we in the camera? Trans tent. Uh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to shake it up. And I've got my finger over the top right now. Uh, and actually, this is probably a better way to do it. Because if you shake it up with the cap on there, and then you pull the cap, there'll be an enormous amount up there, and it will leak. Look at this right here. Look how look how potent that stuff is. Okay, so I got to be a little bit dramatic there. The reason I say that if you get this stuff on you, uh, you're gonna wear it for a while. All right, let's see what uh, let's see what uh, one drop does. Well, sorry, that was two. Let me get my paper towel and and I'm really serious I would recommend having like a, a side table for this stuff uh, super super strong and whatever you wouldn't want to risk damaging I really should move that guitar but I'm just gonna be real careful see that was only two coats I mean that was only two drops and man, did it ever turn a beautiful honey, honey amber. Now, I say that to say this. Don't let that deceive you. Let me back up. This is pretty important. If you if this was nitrocellulose lacquer and you were going to spray the guitar, uh, like in your final coat, uh, that's about the color you'd want to see. Maybe just a little bit less because you're going to want to shoot two or three, maybe five, seven, 15 coats be surprised how quickly that will turn brown after three or four coats. So always make certain that when you're doing your spray work, that this the, the, the tint just barely shows up. But I already know from, uh, oh, I got a, that's a, I didn't get a small enough piece of stain. This is really not going to uh, have much of, of, an, of, a, of an effect on this from a staining standpoint. See how weak that is? Barely even changed it, if at all. So, when you're doing your stain work, and again, I mentioned I'm not going to show you how to do a burst, but I kind of... Okay, that would be like a total of six drops, which is way, way too much if that were nitrocellulose lacquer. You would end up with a, a guitar that is so dark that you could... Or, you just couldn't control it. You'd lose control of your lacquer. See, if that was if your lacquer looks like that, you better cut it because you're going to get in trouble really fast. But where I'm going with this, watch how ineffective it is, it is as a stain, even when it's that dark. And you might be looking at that going, well, I don't know, that's that's pretty that's pretty. That's pretty good. And it's not bad, but, uh, and then again, I say that, that, that's probably not too bad. That would be a safe start if you were doing like a, if you were doing like a, a dirty burst, Les Paul, but look how quickly it starts soaking in and you lose the color. Anyway, uh, that's how you work with the stuff. And that was already six drops. And the only reason I don't want to put 12 or 15 is because that stuff is expensive and I don't want to waste it. But just basically how I worked with the uh, amber there is exactly how you would work with a, with blue or green or, or pink or whatever they may have out there or black. And the cool thing about the black is going to be the, the most potent of all the stains. You probably won't need more than, uh, I don't know, two or, two or three drops max. And uh, your mahogany guitar will... will never be never be seen as mahogany again it'll probably seal it pretty fairly quickly so again trans tint uh, this is the brown mahogany which is what i'm going to do on the back here ever so slightly and then that honey amber is what i'll use for the top because this this guitar is basically just going to be like a dirty i think they call it like a, a dirty lemon or like a faded lemon it's not going to have any red at all i just want it to be 
kind of like an old uh, worn out arch top, okay? So let me get this off the table. And let me check the time, 15 minutes. That's really uh, long enough for just general conversation. Uh, but I just want to make certain that I clarify, I've never uh, stained a black beauty body around all of that binding with the black. And I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think it would leach, but uh, I just don't know. So uh, maybe do some more research there. And, or I do, I do know that as I had mentioned, uh, uh, one thing I can guarantee you, if you put that stain in an acetone or a lacquer thinner and you stain that guitar, I can, I promise you it will leach into that binding. Okay. Because the whole lot, as I showed you that binding earlier work that I had prepped for Rick's guitar, our intention was to stain that binding to make it look like it was 40 years old. But, uh, and then again, I'm, I'm going out of left field here. That may be exactly what you want on your custom. And I'm basically talking directly to this, the client that I built that guitar for. Uh, you may want that age look, but all I know is uh, I don't want to give you any advice that you can't, uh, that you can't, uh, uh, that you can't revert back to uh, the nice white binding. Okay. So just as I always say, Proceed with caution, <laughs> and uh, let me know uh, if if there's anything I might have missed or might have been confusing on. But I do like the Mohawk product, which used to be the baleen. But um, the stuff you could get from um, Stuart McDonald and the Rattle Can, uh, with all the binding taped off really nice and and clean, and then just spray it with that would probably be an incredible job. Why? Because it's nitro cellulose. And I love the nitro. You spray the nitro, and I'm not not kidding. Within 10 minutes, you're able to take some um, 400 grit sandpaper and kind of uh, knock the fur off. And then uh, 20 minutes later, you shoot another coat. And then 10, 20 minutes later, you sand it a little bit. So you can apply something like five to seven coats with the black nitro in one day. Uh, and then, if not more, but um, Keep in mind, when I'm shooting my nitro, I'm uh, the first couple of coats, I'm shooting them extremely thin. They're cut like 40% because I want to penetrate into the wood. And then I cut, start, start changing the cut, meaning like a, a lacquer thinner to, to lacquer, not the nitro <laughs> to the uh, lacquer. I'm talking about thinning with lacquer thinner in order to get a very watery, uh, uh, lacquer when you spray the lacquer okay so I, I'm just gonna stop because I don't want to confuse you nor do I want to try to explain to you how to shoot a nitro body within a 30 second uh, statement there's a lot going on as I always say but nonetheless uh, try try the stuff out of the can but just be careful because it may be so thick that it might start trying to build like a uh, uh, like an enamel we don't want that okay all right so keep in touch let me know that will definitely be the last video related to the uh, to, to, to the, the the black beauty that I built but I may I may do a video in the future about this guitar when I really move forward into doing uh, this type of stain work and 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 preparing to make this guitar look like a heavily road worn uh, you know uh, completely 100% faded out, uh, uh, 59, 58, 59 replica. And, uh, and we'll go from there. But for the most part right now, uh, I want to get back to rockabilly and get the, uh, um, uh, the 6120 conversion under control. And for you guys that are still kind of uh, following that or, or following that, uh, it took, after I did the last video, it only took me just a matter of about 15 minutes to get the, uh, the last seven frets in. And then once I made certain that everything was nice and level where I want it, I just put this uh, straight edge on the top and um, just have very minimal clamping pressure. That will just guarantee that, that nothing funky happens, that um, the, the, the neck might end up bowed down. And then these frets glue in with this epoxy. Now keep in mind, there's only enough epoxy in there to just seal the, around the tank. 
So it's not like I loaded it full. And we'll cover that more in the related to the 6120 build. But I just wanted you guys to see that are following about the the, the neck work for the, uh, uh, the 6120 conversion. So, and you just set that off to the side, let it dry overnight, and tomorrow should be ready to start filing and machining and getting ready to uh, install in the neck. So we're about 20 minutes. I'm gonna kill the video right there. And um, until the next video, um, probably another day or two, and then we'll, we'll be back on the uh, 6120. All right, thanks guys.